Okay, so I just did my first year of college, right? And you know, everyone was like, yeah, college is fun. It's worth the price. You won't regret it. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, it's cool, I guess. There's some professors I want to throw a microwave at, but we're not here to talk about that. Plus, they're probably watching. And I already expected to hate some of the teachers. Like, before you start college, all you hear is about how some of these professors are. But what they don't tell you about is these dorms and how one hallway has to share two bathrooms. Now you might be thinking, what did you expect, y'all? You think there was going to be a bathroom in every room? Yes, bro. I remember I walked into my dorm for the first time expecting it to be a bathroom. I see a door and open it. It's a closet. What kind of sick joke is this? When I realized the whole floor had to share two bathrooms, I was like, you know, maybe college ain't for me. But yeah, get comfy because I'm about to fill you in on what really happens in these shared bathrooms. Alright, so before I even get into the gross stuff, I'm gonna just give a rundown of what happens on an average day. So some dudes like to do this thing where they bring their speaker with them when they take a shower. And you're probably thinking of a little itty bitty speaker. No, bro, I'm talking about the big subwoofer Dolby surround sound system. And they just be blasting their music for the whole hallway to hear. You walk in there, all you hear is... Mook got the keys Somebody just got the whole building shaking, blasting some young boy. And my room is like right next to the bathroom, so now I know NBA young boy's whole discography, and I don't even listen to him. Like, how'd that work? But if I decide I want to bring my own speaker and start playing some whole lot of red, watch how quick they hate me. I just got my label up, I think they owe me. I just got my label up, I think they owe me. I've been on the coding. I've been moving slowly. Can let a nigga hold. Sound like a bike curious dirt bike. And then it's the fact that there's only two stalls. Every once in a while you'd walk in and both of the stalls are taken. And one thing about me is I'm not finna stand there and wait for you to come out. I'm going back to my room. What I look like standing in line like it's a theme park. Then when you open the door, you're gonna look at me crazy. And I wish the stalls had a little bit of space in between them. Cause I'll just be in there chilling and then somebody else will have the nerve to go in the one next to me. I don't care what anyone says, that's not right, okay? There is no sound barrier other than this weak low wall. This is why I only use the stalls when the whole restroom is empty, cause you're not finna catch me letting it rip, okay? Imagine you walk out and someone's like, damn bro, that was you? It sounded like you was playing with a big ass jacket zipper. It sounded like you was pushing the table on a hardwood floor. And then some people would just be loud in the stalls. I swear someone was really on FaceTime taking a dump. Hey Jake, how you doing? I'm doing good. What you up to? Oh no, nah, I'm just taking a shit. Bro, let me say this right now. If you ever call me, I look at your screen and you on the toilet, you getting blocked. And I'm reporting your number to Apple because you can't you can't be out here doing that with no warning. I'm not gonna let you be out here scarring people with the image of you on the toilet. And using a public stall gives me so much anxiety because imagine all the germs. Every time I'm in there, I gotta put a whole bunch of toilet paper on the seat until it's almost like a pillow. I'm not finna be out here catching unknown diseases. They're not finna name a disease after me. And sometimes it's not even germs you gotta worry about. These people be putting anything in the toilet like it's a trash can. I kid you not, someone put a whole box of macaroni pasta in there. Like why? Was you planning to put a fire under it and boil it like it was a pot or something? And there'd be food all up in the sinks as well. One day the sink was just filled with like this orange and red looking substance. I seen that and I was like, nah, let me get out of here because now it looks like niggas doing voodoo rituals in here. And that's not the only creepy thing that happened in there. I remember I walked in one night, I heard this, I heard this loud buzzing noise. I was like, what is that? What is that sound? Tell me why I look up and I see a big ass mutant fly. It was almost the size of a bird. You think I'm lying? Well, guess what? <laughs> I got evidence. I seen that, I walked right out the door. What do, you want, what do you want me to do about that? You want me to kill it? A shoe's not gonna do anything. You might as well nuke the whole building. And this other time I walked in at night and when I opened the door to walk in, it felt kind of weird. Like the, the door felt kind of heavy. And I looked back at it and bro, you know what I saw? Once again, I got evidence. I'm finna show you the video cause I can't even explain it. Why? Who, who took the time to make this? Imagine how creeped out I was when I saw that dangling on the door. And then there's the showers. You'd expect the stalls to be worse than the showers, but bro, you'd be surprised. Sometimes a whole shower curtain would be missing, so that shower will automatically be unusable. Unless you're a freak, you know. And it'd be so nasty in there, oh my god. Whenever I'm in there, my eyes are closed the whole time. Because if I mess around and look down, all I'm going to see is a layer of hair and filth. 
literally covered in hair. The shower floor looks like evil grass. And that's not even the worst of it. All right, so boom. One day I was just chilling in my room after I took a shower. And we have this dorm group chat that the whole building's in, right? So I'm just on my bed after taking a shower and I got a notification. I open it and I see the craziest thing I've ever read in my life. Bro, who took a shit in the shower? I seen that and I ain't gonna lie, I started laughing because they attached a picture of it and everything. The whole group chat was going crazy and I was just having a jolly old time until someone asked, what floor? And he said, second floor. Now I'm not laughing, now I'm serious because that's my floor. And then I looked at the picture again and I realized something. The person who did it tried to hide it with a red rag. And that red rag looked familiar. Then when I put some more thought into it, my heart sank. Because that same red rag was in the corner when I was taking a shower. I almost fainted because that means the whole time I was hotboxing doodle -doo air in the shower. So now my whole floor is on detective mode trying to figure out who did it. But we never found him. I don't know how someone can even do that. Like, the toilets are right there. But no, you'd rather multitask and do it in the shower. Let it run down your leg and onto the floor for the next person to find it. And it's the fact that they didn't even try to, like, I, I don't know, like, wash it down the drain or something. They just covered it with a rag like they was tucking it to bed. The person who did it probably watching this video right now. I'm looking at you. Look at me. You a nasty nigga. But yeah, moral of the story. If you're gonna start college soon, make sure to invest in some shower shoes, okay? You know what? Forget shower shoes. Get yourself some Tims. The shower is a biohazard. You need some practical protection in there. <laughs> Crocs are trash. I want you to take a good look at this abomination and tell me they look good. If you say they do, then I have a question for you. Do your friends and family know that you're a compulsive liar? These past few years, Crocs have been making a big comeback for some reason, and I still don't know why. Like, out of all the shoes that exist, why are these the ones that are popping off? I mean, first of all, let's state the obvious, okay? They're ugly. Like, disrespectfully ugly. Now, I already know what you Croc meat writers about to say. Oh, they got holes in it because they're meant to be water shoes. Great. So why is everyone wearing them on land? What are y'all preparing for a waterbender attack or something? And they don't go well with any outfit either. Like, you could have a fire top, some nice pants, but if you add some Crocs to it, the outfit is ruined. Now you look like a weirdo. If you're not doing anything water related, I don't see why you would want to wear these. You remember how back in first grade you had an eraser and you would just stab it with your pencil until you're satisfied? That's what Crocs look like. Look like a Chicago victim. I remember it was getting closer to my brother's birthday and I was like, hey, what you want for your birthday? He told me he wants some black Crocs. I thought he was joking, but he was serious. So I asked him again, are you sure you don't want, I don't know, some V-Bucks or something? He was like, no, I want some Crocs. I was disgusted. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. The Croc again, the poison his mind. But I can't be completely biased. We gotta, we gotta see what he's thinking, you know what I'm saying? We gotta examine the mind of a Croc lover. So I'm gonna let my brother tell us why he likes Crocs. Hey! What? Enlighten us. Tell us why you like Crocs. I mean, so they're comfortable, they're also light, <laughs> you can wear anything, anywhere. Alright, alright, right, that's enough for that. Alright, 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 that's enough for that. Get out, get out. This is outrageous. He's been brainwashed by the majority. He said that they're comfortable. You know what else is comfortable? Slides, Uggs, bare feet. No one said you had to wear shoes, you told yourself that, okay? But at least Crocs are cheap now, right? I mean, they're, they're ugly, they, they can't be expensive now, right? Right? No way. <laughs> Are you serious? You mean to tell me people are paying this much to embarrass themselves? You know what else you could get for $60? 12 get this subs on my Twitch channel. Look at the description. $60 is crazy though. That's a lot. I mean, you could get some nice vans for cheaper. Uh, actually vans are like $60 or more. And what's even worse about Crocs is the little charms you gotta buy separately and put them in the holes. I've never seen a shoe that you had to buy attachments for like it's Black Ops 2 or something. Like bro, I'm not gonna pay $60 just to have to pay extra for the DLC. What is this, The Sims 4? And then you got the Croc variant. There's a bunch of custom ones you can get if you're just a complete Croc head. I mean look at this, you got the Platform Crocs, Lightning McQueen Crocs, Balenciaga Crocs. I could literally make this myself right now. Give me some Crocs and a one pound dumbbell. Then you got the hippie Crocs and then the, uh, okay, okay. These, these right here, these are fire. These are fire. These are acceptable. If I see someone with these, I'm giving them a high five. So let's say you want something that feels like Crocs, but are way cooler. Well, I got some news for you. Us mortals were blessed one day by the one and only Yeezus. And upon this, he unleashed the greatest shoe of all time, Yeezy 
foam runners. This is everything Crocs wanted to be. Look at the sleek design. Holes at all the right places for perfect airflow. Shaped perfectly for efficient walking. It's perfect. These shoes say, I'm a sad loser that lives on Twitter. These shoes say, I just told you who I thought I was, a guy. And they only cost like $90. And if you don't get them on retail, don't worry. Cause the resellers sell them for only like two kidneys in a spleen. <gasps> Okay, so now that I've told you why Crocs are trash, we're gonna fix them today. What you thought I was just gonna complain about it and not try and solve the problem? I wanna make a difference in the world. And I'm gonna start with Crocs. All right, so we got a Croc here, and you know, obviously it looks disgusting. You know, first of all, we just gotta, we gotta remove the, we gotta remove the holes, cause you know, the holes are like the main problem. So it's just like, you know. Yep, Let's, yep, take all of that out. Look, it already looks 10 times better already. Now that we've done that, we should add a little, you know what I'm saying, add a little decor. You know what will make this look 10 times better? My face. All right, now that we've done that, you know what I'm saying, took out the holes, added my face to it. This will go for approximately $3 million. But I don't, I don't think it's done. I don't think it's done. We, we need to add a little more. Let's see. We got to put this in its place. You know what I mean? We got to put this where it belongs. So let's uh bring that out. Because, you know, shoe, shoes work in certain environments. And this this is where this one belongs, you know? So let's just take this and just, you know, put it where it belongs. You know what I mean? And, you know, that, that, that that's cool and all, but we want to make this. We want to get the most out of this shoe. We, we want to sell this for the most we can. So let's just bring this in here. And there you go. This will go for about mm, 200 million. Uh, end of the day, just just wear whatever you want. Even if they're Crocs, no one really cares. Except for me. If I see you with Crocs, I'm going to run you over. Y'all yeah, remember when you was just a kid watching TV and there was that one character that just rubbed you the wrong way? I had so many cartoon ops back in the day. They would just be in the screen taunting me and I had to sit there with my Tyson chicken nuggets and just take it. But today, <laughs> today I'm getting my get back. Right off the bat, let's get to one of the worst ones. Wyatt from Super Y. You suck! Now you're probably wondering why I hated him so much. It's because I was jealous. Look at this right here. I was four years old asking myself, why did he get to have all the baddies? Bro took the light skins and the dark skins, you greedy muff. No, you're done. No, you're done. Stand right there. Let me roast you. Let me cook you. Uh, let's get ready to rumble. Look at his head. Look at his head. Bro is an ethnic watermelon. Head longer than mine. Man's got the Arby's. We have the meats with that glazed ham shaped dome. Someone in my comments had the nerve to call this man a Brazilian king. You think you Neymar? When I claim Brazil so bad. Look more like an Amazon rainforest activist. Selfie is hard for this. Selfie is hard for this. What made you choose these colors for your outfit with that Windows XP color scheme? You can feel I suck boppable gritter B boy. I speak inside your mouth. All right, who's next? Who's next? <laughs> Oh my god, you cannot be serious. And just the hacker from Cyber Chase? First of all, can we give this man a round of applause just for a second? Look at his upper body strength. Psych! You built like an evil light bulb. <laughs> what is that in your neck? He looked like he finna make the biggest swallow of his life. If he grew a beard right now, it would look like a coat hanger. Bro, why is he green? Bro need to exfoliate his skin immediately. If he don't get your stank self off my screen. Wait a minute. Wasn't he chasing children in the show? He's literally a big L, bro. Get off my screen. Who's next, man? I don't even want to do this no more. Oh, no. She looked like this light-skinned girl I went to high school with. Maya, is that you? Bro got two tick marks for nostrils. Ma'am, can you breathe? Can you breathe? Look at the back of her head. She got orangutan cheeks on the back of her head. You do not want to be around when she brainstorming. All you're going to hear is... <laughs> Look at how high her socks go. Look at her shoes. You could hear her walking down the hallway. <laughs> Them wooden out of moccasins. Get off my screen, monkey. Speaking of monkeys, y'all remember these losers? I couldn't stand them. Every time I'm trying to watch my Playhouse Disney, they would interrupt my show and start hollering through my screen. Doing that same thing. Just <laughs> nah, I'm getting my payback. I'm getting my payback. Hype me up. Hype me up. Yo, look at how they look at why they looking at me like that. They got taco shells for lips and black beans for eyes. Is this Disney Channel or a Chipotle commercial? Them ears look like albino pecans. They look like if Spider-Man did the mitosis. Get off my screen, monkey! There's one more cartoon that I just can't let slide. Probably the worst one out of all of these. Alright, here he is.
This loser from Handyman. Now you're probably wondering, Joe, why why do you have beef with a screwdriver? Cause he had the worst attitude out the whole toolbox. Always had something to say. Wouldn't stop running his mouth. <laughs> right now, <laughs> I'm gonna have fun with this one. Bro, I auditioned for a vegetable but got rejected and had to go with screwdriver. You're not a green bean, you a lean bean. He give me spoiled rich kid vibes. Who put you on the planet? Ugh. Look at those eyes. Look at those peepers. Bro has not slept since he left the Home Depot. Go get some shut eye, little bro. You malnourished eggplant. Wait, he from Handy Hola. Manny. Don't he speak Spanish? But this is una salchicha con sabor a uva, hermano. Here is your winner and new WWE champion, John. I killed you. I killed all of you. Where's my belt? Where's my belt? And that's the bottom line. Cause John said so. If you didn't notice, I'm kind of tall. I'm six feet, which I guess is considered tall to most people. And I think six feet is like the perfect amount of tall, you know? Cause there's such thing as being too tall. I be seeing some basketball players up close and be like, yeah, you got a little too greedy in that character customization menu. Messed around, put your legs to 100, now your feet look like this. But imagine if you were just a normal person and was as tall as Manute Ball. I feel like life would be hard, bro. Everywhere you go, you gotta stand out. Then you're gonna have to always explain to people why you don't put your tall to use by playing basketball. Speaking of that, why is that a thing? Everyone who's tall knows what I'm talking about, bro. Every now and then, you have someone be like, you play basketball? And if you say no, you get that look. That nasty, judgmental look, bro. Like I just called them a slur or something. And saying that is so messed up, bro. I don't think people realize how messed up that is. That's like if someone was born a short ginger and I was like, hey man, why don't you try being a leprechaun? I don't wanna be a leprechaun. But dude, look at you. You are destined to be on the Lucky Charms box. I don't wanna be a leprechaun. All right, man, damn. If you don't wanna be successful, that's your own problem. I'm trying to help you out. I'm trying to lead you to that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. But if you wanna stay broke, that's your own problem. <laughs> just cause I'm tall don't mean I gotta play basketball. I don't even like basketball like that. <laughs> Imagine how many doctors and engineers we lost because they got pressured into dedicating their lives to basketball because they were tall, just for them to not get drafted into the NBA. Now they either gotta go back to college or sell CDs outside the Walmart. And I don't know about you, but if that was me, you won't see me back at no college, bro. I got too much pride. You'll catch me selling mixtapes like I'm on Shark Tank. Look, look, look. Okay, think of this as an investment. This is my latest work right here. Perky make my stomach hurty. Perky make my stomach hurty. Perky make my uh, uh. Back in school, I'd get picked to play basketball just because I looked like I was good, and I would watch as the team's face slowly turned into disgust as they watched me get crossed up like a Bible. Being tall is useful a lot of the times, though. When you're at the store and something's high up, you just get it yourself. I don't gotta get no worker to bring a whole ladder just to get me some Fruit Loops. But sometimes you would be shopping, and a shorter person would be like, Oh, you're tall. Can you get that for me? No. Why do grocery stores even put some items that high? They need to fix that. Ain't no one trying to climb for some peanut butter. Being tall is like a defense mechanism too. I can walk in the city late at night and not have to worry about getting robbed. Hey, look, let's get him. Bruh, you see how tall that dude is? I don't think that's smart. Bro, I don't care. I'm going. Hey! Random package. <laughs> What are some other benefits to being tall? Hold on, let me Google and see if I'm forgetting something. Tall people make more <laughs> I'm poor. Being tall has some cons too, I ain't gonna lie. For example, falling. When you're short and you fall, that ain't nothing. You close to the ground already, ain't no distance you gotta travel. But if you're tall and you trip, it's disastrous. Limbs everywhere, ankles shattered, ACL exploded. Imagine I told you I was gonna push you off this cliff and it's gonna take three days before you hit the ground. That's a lot of acceleration, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Now you know how I feel. When I'm walking, I'm extra conscious about where I step. But every now and then, the ground will conspire against me and try to kick me out. You know those yellow things on the sidewalk with the little bumps and stuff? So one day, it recently had rained and the ground was kind of wet. I was going to class and as I was walking, out of nowhere, I slipped. I felt my body hit the Jordan for a split second, but luckily I caught myself. I looked down to see what I slipped on and it was that dumb yellow thing. Almost assassinated because it was slippery. Apparently, those yellow parts on the sidewalk are there to let people know that the sidewalk is about to end. But I think it's really there to let them know that their life is about to to end because it's literally a weapon of mass destruction when you're tall you don't only get long legs you get long arms too so we got more leg and arm we gotta worry about and that's when clothes become annoying when i was younger and still in the middle of growing my clothes will stop fitting so fast one month you get a nice little t-shirt next month it's a crop top look like ice spice in the munch video he said i'm good enough grab my dirt one day you buy some nice shorts the next day it's a speedo cheeks on full display like anyone trying to see that bro and now that i'm done growing the only real issue i have with clothes is hoodies see i love wearing hoodies it's like a blanket you can wear in public but the thing that 
that will happen sometimes is I will buy a hoodie online in my size. And when it arrives, everything about it is perfect. Except for the sleeves. The sleeves will be too short and I have this fire hoodie that I can't wear without looking like Slenderman. Another thing about having long limbs is sometimes they just be in the way. I be trying to sleep and it feels like my arm is just in my way. Every position I put it in, it feels awkward. I wish I could just pop it off like a Lego and put it somewhere else. Trying to get into smaller spaces sucks too. Like when my car is parked too close to another car and I gotta somehow squeeze in when the door is only 5 inches open. Look like Waluigi trying to step into his cart. And then there's trying to swim with extended limbs bro. Watching me try to swim is a sad sight. Like yeah, in the end, I'ma make it to the other side of the pool, but not without looking like them car dealership balloon things on fentanyl. And when you think about it, there's really no point to learn how to swim if you're tall. I could just stand up. I know they say it's always good to learn just in case of an emergency, but let's say we was in the middle of a flash flood out of nowhere. I wouldn't have nothing to worry about. Everyone else is struggling to stay afloat, and I'm just standing there. Ooh, ooh, help me! No. Despite some of the downsides of being tall, it's way better to be short, bro. You couldn't pay me to be short. I don't care if I'm being held hostage. Let me go. Shut up. Now, the only way you can get out of this is if you become 5'7". Five 5'7"? Seven. Five seven? You, you mean like the sauce? No, I mean your height. So you're saying the only way I can get out of here is if I become 5'7". Yeah. If you're short and I somehow offended you, then I achieved my goal. That was the whole point of the video. F dude. My school is so weird. So I transferred to this college closer to my house and it has like 20 times more people than the last one. And 90% of them are weirdos. Every time I step foot on that campus, I feel like I'm in a Looney Tunes episode. Sometimes when I leave, I can almost hear in the background. That's all folks. Just tune town, bruh. It got to the point where every time someone did something absurd, I just started writing them down like, yeah, that's going in the video. Okay, so the first encounter I had with the bot was first semester this year. I had this math teacher, right? And he had to be one of the most annoying professors ever because I literally couldn't understand him. He had this really strong accent that made it hard to understand what he was talking about. And you know, that's fine. I mean, obviously everybody talked different. I don't expect everyone to have an American accent, but here's the problem. He would wear a mask the whole time, the whole class period. So now it's like impossible to understand him. He wouldn't pull his mask down unless he had to drink some water. And I don't know, but the way, the way he looked when he drank that water just made me mad. It just made me feel violent. So an average day would sound something like this. Like a rhythmic. I ain't gonna lie, at first it was kind of funny. Like I'll be in class trying not to laugh. But then I was like, okay, I actually have to learn this stuff. And I was using all my mental energy trying to make out the words he was trying to say, but it was impossible. Like, come on, dude, be a little self-aware. You know that we probably already have a problem understanding you. Why why did you think it was a good idea to go ahead and wear a mask too? Like, dude, the COVID hype is over. That trend is so last year. Get with the program. But what made me more mad was how the other students would pretend that they knew what he was saying. He would be there talking and everybody would start nodding in agreement. Like, bro, why are you faking who are you pretending for and out of all the subjects it had to be math class math class bro the hardest class i had to take mm, i hate math math is the equivalent of this sound Going to class was completely worthless because I got no information from this man. People just started skipping and learning the stuff on their own. That's how I know these colleges don't really care about whether we pass or fail. They're just trying to get a bag. Because how could you hire this dude knowing we ain't going to understand him? Like we pay for this class, bro. This is not what I ordered. That's like you order in a milkshake at a McDonald's or something. And they come back with just a jug of milk. I asked for a milkshake. If you're gonna start college soon, before you register for classes, please look up the professor, bro. I looked up this dude after I started taking the class and he was a whole celebrity. There was even conversations about him on Reddit and they were saying to stay away from that class. I think I just have bad luck with trash professors, bro. Anyways, that teacher wasn't even the weirdest thing. One day I was just on campus walking to my next class and I hear this weird noise. It was like, I'm like, what's that noise? I look around, I don't see nothing, but I still hear it. It's just, then out of nowhere, right this dude on the smallest dirt bike i've ever seen just rolls by me i'm sitting there like did did this nigga just drive by me in a little tyke's motorcycle out of all the ways you could get yourself to class why did you go with the miniature dirt bike and i know bro probably think he looks so cool doing that i just know it he pulls it out of his trunk no no no. i like to think he just drives it from his house to campus he just pulls up with it like 
four wheels move the body, two wheels move the soul. Go home, bro. Go home. I've been trying to figure out what he does with it once he gets to class. Like, does he take it inside with him and like sit next to it? Ah, it's so confusing. Sometimes I feel like I'm the weird one because these outlandish things will happen and I'm the only one that notices it. Like this one time I was walking on that same exact path and this girl was casually walking with a full Darth Vader costume. And it wasn't even Halloween yet. It was like October 2nd. I look around, everybody continues on with their day. Like this is normal or something. Nobody questioning why we got Darth Vader attending class. And it's it's real funny. It's funny too. Because if I decided I wanted to play dress up and put up the campus with let's say a ski mask. I'm going to jail. I wonder if some of these folks are even real, man. I'd be overhearing the weirdest conversations ever. Conversations that don't even sound entertaining. These two dudes walk by me and they're literally talking about electrons, bro. Electrons. Sounded like something out of a sitcom. Mm, how many electrons does magnesium have? I think 12. <laughs> Just sound like a chat GPT conversation, bro. And I get it, they're probably actually enjoying talking about electrons and they're just being themselves. But like, it's 2023 and you're still being yourself? That's so cringe, ugh. There's also these role players that go to my school. It would be a big group of them in full armor sets and foam swords. And they would just start beating each other with them in the middle of the whole campus. And I was low-key trying to watch one of them, right? But the thing was, they wasn't even getting active for real. They was not even going crazy, bro. I ain't see no horses. I ain't see no cannons. I almost wanted to jump in there and start making stuff happen, you know? Just walk in. <laughs> you know what it is. You know what it really is. I think this is the first time I'm for real being around actual nerds. And I'm just not used to it. Like, yeah, in high school, there was this super smart kids and stuff but here these are the same nerds in movies that get beat up and stuffed in a locker and at first i never understood why they did that to them i used to always feel bad for them but now i'm like i can't kind of get it. Can I say that? Is that wrong to say? I haven't heard this actual furries at my school, bro, wearing the tail and everything. Cat ears, chokers, a stuff for the luck. Luckily, I haven't seen one because if I did, I would have committed a hate crime, bro. I'm finna be real with you. Finna be in there locked up, bro. Jailbreaker juice. I usually just spectate the weirdos from a distance, but sometimes they find a way to interfere with my day. I had this one class where the seats were kind of like an auditorium, right? So if you walked in late and there was no more seats on the outside, you had to be that guy who squeezes through. But later in the semester, people stopped showing up to class. So even if you were late, there was always a seat that wasn't in between a row of people. So there was this one guy that would come to class and I noticed that every time he went to find a seat, instead of just sitting in the open seat, he would choose the one chair that was in between a row of six other people and try to sit there. I don't know what kind of person would intentionally put themselves in that situation, but you don't have to. Excuse me. Excuse me. Ever since I noticed this, I started to keep my eye out for him. Cause being around suspicious activity in public in America nowadays, you just never know. Gotta be prepared just in case somebody wanna start their Joker arc. I sat close to the exit, so if anything went down, I would just bounce. I ain't saving nobody. So one day I'm in that same class and the room is like at half capacity. There was a ton of seats available. I was in one row and I think there was another dude two seats to my left. And the suspicious dude walked in and I started to keep an eye on him, right? But then he started walking in my direction. So I'm like, oh, this is it. I look at the exit, it's calling my name. Come here, baby, be free. So he gets to my row and is like, excuse me, can I just squeeze in here real quick? And after he sat down, I realized the row in front of me was completely empty. He could have sat right there. Oh, it don't make no sense, bro. It don't make sense. But that's not even the worst. That's not even the worst. Some of these folks are just straight up nasty, just foul. All right, so I was outside when they waited for my last class to start and I see something I didn't like. This dude walked by me barefoot. Barefoot! Like we at the beach or something. What is up with these creatures? As he walked off into the distance, I looked at the bottom of his feet and it was so black. If he said the N-word, I would've even tripped. Get your sidewalk slappers off the floor, just smacking across campus. And you know he did not wash his feet after he went home. He just let all that bacteria glaze his soles. And this other time, oh my gosh, this other time. I was walking to class and there was this couple in front of me. And everything was going normal. Everything seemed cool. We were just walking. And then out of nowhere, this girl does the most nastiest. Ugh! His girl out of nowhere put her hand in her crack and just started scratching. Just. I saw this. I'm like, I cannot believe my life. I couldn't breathe. I feared to breathe. All the air in the vicinity was compromised. Just like that, the whole campus should have went on lockdown. We have a biohazard here ready to go touch some door handles and desks. And then she gonna play it off like we ain't see it. And the crazy part was, the dude next to her didn't even react or nothing. Like this was normal. See, if that was me, oh, if that was me, Chris Brown, immediately. That's not, uh, I'm sorry, that wasn't funny. Anyways, I don't wanna talk about this no more. I'm getting flashbacks. So I'm in college right now and I study computer engineering. You're probably wondering what it's like for your major to be computer engineering. It goes a little bit like this.
Bro, this major sucks. And my programming teacher from freshman year didn't help either. And today I got, I gotta expose him. I'm sorry. I had this trash professor that just ruined my perspective on programming. I won't say his name here, even though he deserves it. His name is Michael Jones. That's M-I-C-H-A. Nah, I'm just playing. That wasn't his name, y'all. Chill out. But for the sake of this video, we're gonna call him Mr. Jones, okay? So in Mr. Jones' class, we're supposed to learn about basic computing and coding. So he starts talking about basic stuff teachers talk about on the first day. You know, syllabus, the rules, what to expect. And I slowly started to realize his voice was kind of annoying. When he was explaining what the class was about, he was like, so you guys are gonna learn how to code on these computers. <laughs> he said... He sounded like he sounded like a country squidward. No offense if you sound like that. Just just don't talk to me, bro. And I forgot to mention this class was at 8 a.m. in the morning, so I'm already annoyed because I gotta wake up so early for class. If you about to go to college, let me tell you right now, do not get those 8 a.m. classes. It's not like high school, bro. Especially if you're out of state. If you don't got your mom waking you up, you're not gonna wake up, bro. Trust me. He will be explaining about the class, but for some reason, for like a week straight, he just repeated himself over and over. We went five classes and still didn't learn anything. He just kept on going over what the class was about and the rules. So now I'm thinking, okay, I got a bad feeling about this because my professor is the NPC and this script is glitching. So I had to sit there and endure this guy's annoying voice. And I was trying so hard not to make a face because I sat closest to him. But his voice was the least of my problems. Turns out, Mr. Jones was just a complete jerk. So we had to partner up and present a PowerPoint, right? And every group that went up and presented, instead of letting them get through it, he would stop them and just start roasting us. Look at him right there. What's wrong with him? Is he sick or something? Y'all think I'm joking. He actually said that. Another group went up and he literally clowned their outfits. I'm not lying. He was like, look at how they dress. They're not even dressed for a presentation. Like, bro, it's 8 in the morning. You want us to put on a suit and tie for a, for a five-minute presentation? What do you think this is, the Met Gala? He was just so weird. He acted like he was just better than all of us. He treated the classroom like it was an episode of Wild and Out. How depressing is your life that you gotta embarrass your own students for your own pleasure? Who are you trying to impress? The college girls that's a third your age? Freaky boy, freaky boy. Let me tell you right now, bro. It's not happening. I mean, look at you. Just the way he looked made me so mad. It just made me hate him more. He was built like a deep breath, like a Samsung battery. And I didn't mention the fact that he would drink Pepsi every day at 8 a.m. in the morning. Every time he walked in, he will be carrying a fresh Pepsi like they sponsored him. No wonder he was built the way he was. I know bro's blood was black. So the first few weeks of class, he would teach us the most mundane things ever. Like he was literally teaching us how to use Microsoft Word and how to turn on a computer. I'm not lying. He was teaching us like it was still the 90s and the internet just became a thing. But I wasn't mad at it. I was like, okay, this class is going to be pretty easy. I can get used to this. Then out of nowhere, one day in the middle of class, he went up to the board and just started writing a bunch of zeros and ones. So now I'm like, okay, th this gotta be a prank, right? <laughs> Where's the cameras? And then he started adding them together and legit said to my face, one plus one equals zero. What? My whole life they told me one plus one equals two. Then we start learning binary code. All, all of a sudden we gotta throw that out the window. And then we started doing actual coding. And this is where Mr. Jones just made me despise him. None of us have ever done coding before. We were here to learn how to do it. The closest experience I had to coding was Redstone and Minecraft. And I sucked at redstone. So he knows we're beginners at this. Tell me why every time someone would ask for help, he'd be like, it's your program. Just tell it what to do. Just the laziest cop out I've ever heard. He never actually showed us how to code. He would just dump the work on us and tell us to look at the resources online for help. Well, I tried that and it didn't help either. He set it up so terribly. Well, like, some of the content was in Latin. I have screenshots. Yeah, I know I always bring the proof. There's no way this guy is a computer professional and don't know how to set up online stuff. And I ain't sit there and just accept defeat. You could blame me if I wasn't trying or if I wasn't trying to get help. I will always go up to this bum and ask questions, but no matter what, his information was so vague and useless. It's like he didn't want us to pass. I started hating this guy so much i started having ideations of just walking up to him and punching him in the mouth in front of the whole class and just run off what is he gonna do chase me he's so coked up on pepsi he might pass out there was one assignment where we had to make a specific program right and the whole class was just completely lost nobody knew what was going on so he put up his code on the big screen to explain it but instead of letting us see it 
He just scrolled through the whole thing super fast. Every time he pulled it up, he would just do the same thing, just blast through it. Like, what was the point of this? It got to the point where we, when he pulled it up, we had to pull out our phones and record it before he closed the window again. Why should we have to take these extreme measures to learn, bro? This is so strange. Next thing you know, it was the end of the semester and I literally learned nothing. I was still confused and we had to do a final project where we pretty much had to combine everything that we learned. At this point, I was like, okay, I don't care. I'm gonna harass this guy until I get what I need from him. And I guess this was the most work he's ever had to do because when I went up to him another time, he just straight up showed me his code. He didn't even bother explaining it. Just lazy. And the code had things that we'd never even seen before. There were some things in there that he hasn't even taught us. So he expected me to complete this assignment with things that we didn't even learn. What I look like, Megamind? Dexter's Laboratory? Mm, according to my calculations, no bro. He ended up having to curve everybody's final grade because no one knew what they were doing. I'm still trying to figure out how this guy even got hired. But I was like, whatever. I'm done with this class. I don't gotta see this bum again. Next semester come around, and in my next coding class, he's my professor again. I got so mad and nervous at the same time knowing this guy was my teacher again because now I knew what he was all about. He started his lazy teaching again where he would just go through one PowerPoint and leave it up to us to figure out the rest. This time, I knew I couldn't rely on him. I had to use YouTube to teach myself how to code. Some guy on my screen did a much better job explaining C++ than Mr. Jones ever could. But Mr. Jones wasn't done being a bum. He hasn't reached his final form yet. So he would do this thing where every time you had to resubmit an assignment because you did something wrong, he will take off 10 whole points. So you'll forget something simple like forgot to put your name on the top. Boom, that's 10 points off. We will end up with 70s and 80s on assignments that we eventually did perfect just because we had to change a few things. Even if you forgot something as simple as punctuation, he'd give you a 90 just to slight you. A hundreds didn't exist in this class. And when people will call him out on it, he will laugh like it was funny. It don't make no sense. Like you can't be a trash teacher and then a strict grader at the same time. I started feeling like I was trapped. I had no way of passing this guy's class because bro don't want me to pass and there was nothing I could do. He was able to just get away with this. Once I was talking to my dad and he was like, how's school going? And I'm like, my programming teacher sucks. And my dad was like, what's his number? I wanna talk to him. And I was like, uh, okay. I was panicking at first, cause let's be real. Nobody wants their parents talking to their teachers. But I was like, you know what? Maybe this is a good thing. My dad's gonna see how much of a bun this guy is and understand why I can't stand him. A few minutes later, I get a call back. Hello? Hey, I talked to your professor. He's a nice guy, actually. Huh? Let him help you. He's there to help. He's a good guy. I can tell. <laughs> I just can't win. I just can't win. Everything I do, Mr. Jones is one step ahead. Since Mr. Jones was so useless, me and some other classmates will help each other with the assignments. And one day he just came up to us and guess what he said? Looks like you guys are cheating over here. I'm gonna have to report this. <laughs> You gotta be kidding. And I thought he was kidding, so I didn't even think about it much. Then a few days later, he came up to me and he was like, so I went to the higher ups and told them about what y'all did, but they say that it was okay, so you're fine. So you're telling me you put my whole college career at risk for no reason? This man was African slap distance. You don't understand. I've never snapped at somebody in public, but this was the closest I've ever been. I wanted to smack him so bad we exchanged skin tones. He was actually okay with getting me kicked out of college when it was his fault that we even had to help each other in the first place. And he had that same smug look on his face. Like, bro, I'm trying to pass this class. I ain't trying to get a C. Bother me one more time. I'm going to drown you in your Pepsi. Mm. I'm tired of all these ones and no's. I'm going to pull out the nine. I know your big self was first at the table asking mommy, is it dinner time? Yeah. <laughs> I ain't done. I'm flicking you back and forth like a yo-yo. You got nowhere to go. Mm. I don't need your head on a platter. I need it to go. Mm. Hope you got insurance. You're gonna need flow. Mm. I'm gonna feed you to my pet monkey. His name Pogo. <laughs> oh, Allah. Allah. Anyways, I ended up passing the class with a B. No thanks to Mr. Jones. I still hold a grudge against this guy to this day. Because he had me thinking I was dumb and I wasn't trying. But I realized that he was just a trash professor. And really just a trash person in general. Mr. Jones, if you're watching this, I'm gonna haunt you. I've already made plans. This is motion right now. It's too late. Don't look behind you. I'm racist against birds. When it comes to other animals, I'm like Snow White. I'm cool with all of them. I've even be talking to them. I'm not crazy. I don't even like to kill bugs. When I see a cockroach, I don't even trip no more. I just give him a little warning like, hey pal, you're on the wrong side of town. I'm gonna let you off the hook now, but don't let me see you around these parts again. And then we exchange a few head nods. I support the lives of all animals. Don't get it twisted though. I ain't no vegan. What I look like a loser? But something about birds doesn't make me violent. Actually, a lot of things about birds make me violent. I've been personally slighted by birds in the past, but more on that later. I'm gonna start by going down my long list of reasons of why I hate birds. So sit down and listen to me complain.
Let's start with the obvious, okay? Birds are just evil. I have never caught a bird being a good Samaritan. They're always doing something wrong. Acting like we had angry birds in real life. Man, one day I was just driving and I saw this big bird flying with a whole cat in his talons, bro. Ruined my whole day. What is a bird finna do with a cat anyway? Go eat some worms or something. You know what? That bird probably grew up watching Looney Tunes and had to see Tweety Bird get harassed by that cat and was like, Oh, one day I'ma get revenge for my nigga Tweety Bird. I'ma slide for you, boy. I got a question. Do birds hate dark skins or something? Cause I feel like I've been done dirty by a bird more than the average human. The fact that I got more than one negative interaction with a bird gotta mean something. One of my earliest memories from my childhood was when I was standing in my backyard just minding my business. And then a bird just flew across my face. Just swiped my face like a credit card. Wells Fargo. Get it? Cause foul means bird. And Wells Fargo, the bank. He was supposed to laugh. And I just know that bird did it on purpose because I had to be like three feet tall. So that bird had to cautiously lower its altitude, line itself up with the center of my face and crash right into me. Never forget. I think I know what the problem is. I think I know why birds are such demons. Because think about it. These are living beings that can fly. That would make anyone an egotistical maniac. Bro, if I could fly, I'd be the biggest menace on earth. Somebody look at me wrong? I'm snatching their kid and putting them on the tallest building nearby. And all they can do is stand there looking stupid. But here's the thing. Even the birds that can't fly be so aggressive. I think they're even more aggressive because they're jealous they can't fly. Y'all ever had to deal with chickens? Ugh, they're the worst. If you're familiar with my channel, you know I got family in Gambia and Senegal. So in 2013, when I was like nine, I visited Gambia and I was staying at my aunt's house. And they had this chicken that had a few baby chicks. So I was bored and I decided, you know what? I'm gonna go see what the chicken fam is up to. So I walked up to them and the chicken mom saw me and started doing that freaky thing birds do with their feathers. Just got all ruffled and weird. At the time, I didn't know that meant the chicken was getting mad. I thought it was trying to say hi, give me a hug or something. So I got closer to the chicks and this chicken started chasing me. So immediately I started running for my life, right? I ran a little bit thinking it was gonna stop chasing me. I looked back, it's still coming for me. This nigga has stamina. So I kept running and then I tripped on something and I thought it was over. I'm like, yeah, bro, <laughs> this is it. I'm finna get pieced up by a chicken, get to heaven and just get laughed at. But eventually the chicken left me alone. I went back to Africa in 2022 thinking my chicken wanted level went down but nah they still had a problem with me we we're in synagogue visiting family and i was just standing outside minding my business i was wearing one of my favorite pair of vans and this baby chick walks up to me oh what's up bro <laughs> now you understand why i hate chickens unless they're baked fried or in between some bread another thing about birds is how they're so unpredictable and twitchy their movements are just so awkward and janky you could not pay me to catch and hold a bird i'd rather hold a snake because at least if the snake tries to attack i could just tie it in a knot or like bite it in half like a Twizzler or spin it around like a lasso till it gets dizzy and then bite it. Another thing about birds is how demonic they look. The way they're designed is so intimidating. Like eagles, for example. You ever seen an eagle? Look like they wanna call me the N-word. They just, <laughs> they just look so menacing. Smile, bro. And there's some birds that don't even look real. There's this bird called a Lafarina and it straight up looks like something out of Terraria. I see this and feel the need to defend myself. Imagine it's dark and you're outside and in the distance you see the staring you down. It doesn't even look like, how does this count as a bird? Sometimes it looks like the Pringle logo going super sane. Bro, y'all ever seen a featherless owl? Jump scare. Take a look at this abomination with me, bro. It looks like an alien. What's your real name, Artemis213? If you told me that this animal was a carnivore, I wouldn't believe you. We're from apex predator to child predator. I was right even that scary for real. It's all feathers, bro. This is the equivalent of getting that knee surgery that makes you taller. No matter how much bone you add to your leg, we all know you're still short on the inside. I hate short people. There's this other bird called an umbrella bird. And what is that? What is that dangling on your neck, bro? Ugh, I would've pulled it. This bird wants to be opium so bad. Car Already not signing you, bro. Look like your name, Edgar. I can't possibly see how that being on your neck can be comfortable. This is like having your shoe untied all the time. If they were smart enough, they would get like a hair tie and wrap it up or something. Put it in a little bun. Speaking of how birds look, y'all notice how every cartoon bird is an annoying character? All of them. Simp Mordecai, Roadrunner, Birdman, Toucan Sam. I don't know, I feel like he touched kids. There's barely any other bird characters that are really likable. Even the animation industry don't like birds, bro. They see the vision. Do birds actually do anything for the ecosystem? And I don't wanna hear, oh, they help pollinate the plants. That don't count, that's not impressive. I feel like a lot of the things birds do is so unnecessary. Like all that yapping they be doing at 6 a.m. in the morning, all that hollering, be so annoying. It's like nature set an alarm for me without my consent. Somebody arrest this guy. And when you really listen to what they saying, they're not even spitting for real. They just repeat the same bar over over and over again just mix it up a little bit bro it's getting old i'm recording right now you could probably hear them outside the window listen i'll be right back
And at this point, I know y'all bird meat riders are fuming right now. But hear me out on this next one. The one thing I think everyone hates about birds is the fact that they drop dookie nukes on everyone's car. Come home with your freshly washed car. The next day is painted the color poop. They have no regard for the folks on the ground. They just let it rip in the air. Y'all so smart to make nests. Why don't y'all make little bird stalls? But no, y'all wanna hit a drive-by in everyone's car. There's also this weird thing that eagles do that I found out about recently. I was on Instagram and there was these two eagles in the sky holding talons, doing cartwheels, bro. While they were spiraling towards the ground. I couldn't even believe it was real. Like, bro, is, is this AI? Is this chat GPT? And then they let go of each other right before they hit the ground. That's some Tony Hawk sh**. Get it? Hawk? Birds? You were supposed to laugh. As an animal, how do you even come up with that? But you know what? I kind of get it. Because look, imagine how fun their lives already are. They get to fly all day long. But eventually, they're going to get bored of that. So they got to ramp up the thrill a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Add a little risk to it. If I ever saw that in real life, though, with no prior knowledge about it, I probably would freak out. Thinking the world is ending. This is two-headed demon flying towards you. All right, this last thing some birds do that's been in my mind is actually concerning. You ready? Why are we so okay with knowing that there's some birds out here? That can talk. That That's not normal. Don't tell me that's normal. If I told you my pet could talk, you would say, Ja, you crazy. But if I said it's a parrot or a raven, you say, yeah, it's a parrot. That's what they do. This is insane. Imagine the first person that discovered that some birds can talk. Wow, this is a nice looking bird. Wow, this is a nice looking bird. I have got to put the coke down. And I know parrots don't actually know what they're saying. They're just repeating what they hear. But one day these dudes are going to get advanced enough to the point where they're going to start speaking their mind. Parrot is going to come up to you and just be like, hey, tough guy. Heard you ain't like birds. So guess what? I'm coming for your girl. I'm coming for your kids. I'm coming for your moms. And just fly away. And you try to tell someone about it and they're like, yeah, it's a parrot. That's what they do. There are a few birds that I actually like though. Well, only one bird. And that's penguins, bro. Penguins are just so cool. They're the best. You never hear anything bad about them. I never went outside and got assaulted by a penguin. You know why? Because they live in Antarctica? No, stupid. Because they actually have respect. How many penguin movies are out there? Happy Feet, Surf's Up. Ugh, it's so cool. I went back and watched it yesterday. This is legit. Like, I'm not even joking. The best animated movie ever. Penguins of Madagascar. Happy Feet 2. Pengu. <laughs> Penguins got a chokehold on Hollywood, bro. I even used to have this penguin character that I drew a lot back in middle school. If you watch my 100k special video, you know what I'm talking about. And when I was first planning out my YouTube channel, I considered making him my character. I could have been a penguin, bro. But every other bird can get deep fried. I don't care. And that right there brings me to my last point. The only time I will enjoy birds is if they in his gut. Man, they taste so good. Matter of fact, we need to start eating more birds, bro. Why stop at chickens? I'm trying to take my hatred to the next level. I want to seek my teeth into some woodpecker tenders, some grilled bald eagle breasts, flamingo kung pao. But in the meantime, I support every restaurant that serves chicken. Chick-fil-A, Popeyes, Arby's, Okay, not Arby's. Imagine being killed for food just to end up in the Arby's mountain meat sandwich. Get to heaven and just get laughed at. You know what would be cool? If chickens could choose what restaurant they got served at before they got cooked. I think that's fair. You know, let them fill out a little Google form survey before they die. They're going to be like, oh, yeah, send me, send me to this five star restaurant right here. I'm trying I'm trying to get all up, man. I'm trying to get all up. Lay it on a toasty brioche bun. I hate being an introvert. It's awesome. I think people confuse being introverted with being shy. Like, I've talked in front of the class, no problem. I've done trumpet solos and murdered it. Mic drop. <clears throat> Say my name. Say my name. An introvert is someone who gets drained by socializing and recharges by being alone. Shy people get anxious around people. Meanwhile, introverts just hate people. I first learned that I was an introvert probably around middle school. I remember it was sixth grade and the first school dance was coming up. Everyone was so hyped about it, even me. The day came and it was like the Met Gala. Folks was dressing like they made two million a year. Like how as an 11 year old did you manage to get Rick Owens from head to toe? Anyways, I got to the dance and they was going crazy. It was 2014, so they was blasting that gas, boy. You walk in, first thing you hear, your little beats, holla at me. There was a mosh pit, a whole conga line. I actually had fun, but that was the first time. Next dance came along. I'm thinking it's gonna be as fire as the last one. You walk in, another banger is playing. I'm in love with the book, And everybody's dancing, and I was too for like five minutes and then I was like, okay, this is kind of boring. And I went and sat on the bleachers and played Angry Birds on my phone. And I'm sitting there watching people jump to some music for an hour asking myself, how is this fun? Fast forward to my first year of college and I went in with a different mindset. I was like, all right, I, I get to start fresh. It's gonna be a movie this year. I'm going to all the parties. I'm finna go crazy. You know, hot boy jaw has emerged from his slumber. So one day I get a message, party tonight at this address. I look at it. <laughs> I 
realized so fast that I didn't even want to go to no parties. And even if I did, I would have been so out of place. Because, you know, at college parties, they got every drug known to man. And I signed that red ribbon back in kindergarten. You know, I pledge to be drug free. I would look so dumb at a party talking about, uh... Do you guys have any non-alcoholic beverages? I can tell you right now, one of the best days I've had was when first semester was over and my roommate had just moved out and I had the whole room to myself. I felt so free. I was so comfortable, but bro, I don't even need clothes. I got the room to myself. No one can bother me. I feel great. <gasps> black hole, black hole. As an introvert, I find it so weird when a complete stranger starts talking to me out of nowhere. I hate when I'm in public minding my own business and someone starts a long-winded conversation out the blue. Like if you got a question or you just want to chat a little, okay. But when they keep going on and on, it's so weird. Like, bro, we don't even know each other. Who are you? Like I didn't even do anything but I somehow triggered an unskippable NPC cutscene. I don't know, when it comes to complete strangers, I don't bother forcing a conversation to happen. Like when I'm in public, the first thing I think isn't, I wonder how many conversations I could start. It's more like, if one person says something to me, I'm punching them in the mouth. When it comes to making friends, I just go with the flow. Trying to befriend every person you see is how you end up with some weirdos around you. There's a bunch of shows where someone gets too friendly with a stranger and they end up getting clapped. And every time I'm like, you see that? You see that right there? I tried to tell you, bro. Another thing I hate is phone calls, man. I don't care who it is. It can be Pink Panther's call. <sighs> nah, I actually might pick up. She kind of bad. It could be the YouTube CEO, Susan, and I still won't pick up. Every time I get a call, I just watch it ring. and go back to what I was doing. Like, I'm not finna let nobody trap me in a non-consensual conversation, bro. Phone calls in general are just so eerie to me. The second I get a call, so many questions rush through my head. Why are they calling me? What do they want? What was so important that they couldn't text? Am I gonna hear good news or bad news? When I get a text, I can think about what I'm gonna say, predict how the conversation is gonna go, and respond at my own pace. Which is why I hate when I get a text that doesn't even get to the point. When someone just says, hey, or can I ask you a question? They just get blocked and reported, bro. Stop wasting my time. Why didn't you just ask the question in your first text? Why did you send that ominous sounding text instead? Got me thinking you're gonna ask me to help you hide a body, bro. This is why I enjoy nighttime. Cause you don't gotta deal with nobody. The earth is completely quiet unless you live in this area. And I can be alone with my thoughts. <laughs> Sometimes I be having the most interesting conversations with me. I be having whole podcast episodes featuring myself. What you think about that recent Baby Tron album? It was good. What did you think of it? It was good. Why do we agree on everything? Because we're the same person. So how is there two of us here? Uh... I don't know. There can only be one. Why? I daydream a lot too. I be making whole five star movies in my head. I be in class and the teachers talk about logarithmics. And I'm over here producing Zootopia the sequel. Hey! You over there! Pay attention! Nah nah nah! He's daydreaming. Let him cook. Being an introvert is cool and all, but sometimes I wish I was an extrovert too. Going out and doing all that extrovert stuff looks like fun, but I don't find it fun for me. But I wish I did find it fun. What? If you're an introvert and you relate to some of these, let me know. If you're an extrovert, shut up sometimes. But yeah, that's it. Follow the Twitch. I be doing stuff on there. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Oh, oh, black hole, black hole. A few days ago, I asked you guys what your favorite color was and why. And there were many good responses. Colors are really interesting. They all got their own energy and vibe. Some colors are beautiful, and some colors don't deserve rights. Like orange. You thought I was gonna say black, you racist. Orange is probably one of the worst colors of all time. Am I the only one who used to think orange was the coolest color back in like first grade? And the older I got, the less I liked it. It just has childish vibes. If orange could speak, I feel like it would be so annoying. Knock, knock. Knock knock. Who's there? Orange. Orange shoe. Orange, you glad I didn't say banana. <laughs> and orange is so unoriginal too, bro. It's the only color named after something that already exists. The fruit orange came first, and the color just stole its whole flow. Like it was worthy of carrying the title. That's like if a family member came up to you with one of the most filthy, egregious beast of a baby and said, Guess what? We're naming him after you. Nah, you know what? Let him keep my name. I'ma go kill myself. You know what? We need to have an orange genocide. Just execute anything orange. Except orange chicken. I, I like those. But other than that, orange lives don't matter. Orange will have to be my favorite. As an artist, any warm color makes me feel happy. But the co All this yapping just to defend the mid color. Get off my screen. And Netflix has the nerve to call one of their own shows, Orange is the New Black. The disrespect. Orange got nothing on the color black. Now black is a fire color. It's so mysterious. It go- Boo.
Black is great in any situation. Outfit, drawings, basketball, it just don't end. Black is the only color you can fully dress up in and not look weird. If someone wore an all red outfit, you'll look at them like they're crazy, like they're trying to cosplay a lung. But if someone wears an all black outfit, it looks completely normal. Nice fit, bro. Very opium. And whether you like black or not, I got news for you, pal. You see black at least eight hours a day when you sleep. Thank God we get to stare at such a golden color while we're asleep. I don't know what I would do if I had to close my eyes and all I saw was orange. <laughs> and black is low key a hero. Let me break it down for you. Okay, so you know how black absorbs more heat than other colors? What does that mean? While all these other colors are out here looking pretty, black is out here fighting global warming, bro. Taking all the extra heat out the atmosphere. This is the Batman of the color wheel. I like really dark black because it reminds me of you. Then you got yellow. Everyone agrees that yellow is associated with happiness. Which is probably why no one likes yellow, cause all y'all are sad! The only time yellow looks nice is when it's on a Lamborghini. Or like a banana. But other than that, yellow is just a weird color. If yellow could make noise, it would sound like Just such a sharp color. Yellow is so mid that they kept that in mind while making traffic lights. Just such a corny color. I like mustard, okay? But I don't even put- Hold on, I was about to sneeze. <laughs> I like mustard, okay? But I don't even put it on my hot dogs because I don't want to ruin the hot dog core aesthetic. But yellow looks good in some situations. So I used to have this yellow hoodie because I wanted to try something new. And the second I put it on, all I heard in the background was... Blacky yellow, blacky yellow, blacky... Bro, blacky yellow go so hard together. Caution signs, bumblebees, taxis, bananas... These two go together like your finger on that subscribe button. Go ahead. Click on it. Yellow is literally so bright and happy like you can't go wrong with yellow. Especially neon yellow. I love neon yellow. We all should strive to be as happy as this person. Without drugs. I like yellow because I am yellow. Minion? Then there's green, and you know what? I like green. Green is a real nice color. People associate green with nasty, and I blame Nickelodeon for that. Back in the day, there was dunking folks in slime, instilling that false narrative that green equals gross in our head. Propaganda. I like how society just agreed on making green the positive color. When you do good on a test, you get a green check mark. When you're driving, you see green, that means go. Every time my little brother playing 2K and make a shot, I hear green. But I will say, the darker green gets, the worse it gets. Like a banana. Dark green is such a disgusting creature. Why does he look like that? I don't know. I feel like, I feel like he just look untrustworthy. Like he keep his secrets or something. Who would ever wear this shade of green on their clothes? Green cuz green M&M. <laughs> Blue sucks. I hate it. It's just such a weak beta color. I want to bully him. Give me your lunch money. How is it the most popular color? If you don't get your I'm blue, da -ba -dee, da -ba -dee, off my screen. Y'all remember that one movie, Inside Out, with that sad bitch? That's exactly how I imagined blue would look like. I legit own zero blue clothing. I'd rather wear dream merch. We gave blue too much clout, man. Why do we have to look up at the sky and see such a foul color? Oh my god. I'd rather the sky be red, look like I'm in has been hotel. Don't ask me how I know about that show. I'm not a loser. I'ma be honest. Only blue thing I own is my bills. Mm. I'm like a blood. I see blue around me, I catch kills. Mm. Wear blue around me, I put you on the spot like Brazil. <laughs> oh, Allah, Allah. At this point, you're probably wondering what my favorite color is. It's red. Red is just a perfect color, man. It just stands out from the rest. They even named the best album of all time after red. Game recognized game. Fun fact, did you know that looking at the color red makes you hungry? That's why almost every restaurant logo uses so much red. Bro. Red is a master manipulator. How you let a color tell you what to eat? Red has actual power out of all the colors. When I'm driving and I see a white sign with a speed limit, I ignore it. When I see the orange construction zone sign, I ignore it. When I see a big red stop sign, what do I do? Stop! Stop! I know people think red is evil and has bad energy, and that's the way it should be. Red should put fear in your soul. And if I still haven't convinced you that red is the best color, just look deep within your heart. Let's see what y'all said about the color red. Darkish red because it's the color of blood, okay? Red because blood. Yes, that's it. Red because I like blood. Dark red, like for- 
I don't feel safe. Then you got pink. Pink is a weird color. It's the only one that's associated with a gender. Back when I was a kid, if you were a dude and you wore pink, you got brutally beaten to death. But there was always that one guy in class who was trying so hard to be different and would be like, pink is my favorite color. What a loser. Honestly, depending on the shade, pink is just the color white with a little bit of seasoning. It's a cool color though. It looks like it tastes good. Pink because my creepy pink, my boot brown. When it is, I'm looking for the hole. Now purple, purple is just pink if it was 73 years old. Purple is such an unnecessary color. Why do we even have to put up with this guy? We need to do it how we did Pluto, just delete it from existence. Purple is no longer classified as a color. They say purple is the color of royalty. If there was a king that wore purple, I'm not respecting bro's authority. How are you gonna tell me what to do when you dress like Willy Wonka? Go make me some chocolate syrup. Then there's brown. Poop. Brown is the most disgusting color mankind has ever created. It's so boring and bland. It reminds me of tables. I don't want to think about tables. People have been trying to make brown cool recently with their little outfits online. You thought you ate? There's folks out here who got brown in their last name. You're just a walking L. Never introduce yourself, ever. Raise your hand if your favorite color is brown. Okay, now if you raise your hand, I want you to sit down and do some self-reflection. This is probably why you have no friends. If I knew my favorite color was brown, I would just lie about it and keep it a secret. Brown is warm and inviting, like sleep or a hug or hot chocolate. Okay, here's what I want y'all to do. I want y'all all to go find this person in the comments and go cyber bully them. Does gray count as a color? I didn't know what the color gray was till I was like seven. It's such a sad, depressing tint. I feel empty looking at this color. If gray was a person, I feel like it would smell like cigarettes. What are you supposed to be, a light black or a dark white? Make up your mind, buddy. Pull in a Michael Jackson here. And last but not least, white. Why does a cool- <laughs> Why is a cool color? Unless I open an app in light mode. I find it interesting how if you ask anyone to describe the future, they're all gonna mention that everything's white. That's probably why Apple makes all their products white. Which I hate by the way. Every time I'm done using my AirPods, they look like they were dipped in some honey. That's my only real problem with white. It gets dirty so easily. Every time I wear a white tee, I end up with some weird stains. Like where did that brown substance come from? My PS5 controller, same problem. By the end of my first week using it, it looked like somebody grilled it. Just had brown spots all over it like a banana. Okay, subscribe, please. Let's hit a million subscribers this year. Okay, bye.